four drivers of four vans got done for being in charge of a motor vehicle whilst over the prescribed drink drive limit. This was all while they were just camped out inside the camper van, engines off, they were there for the night and they still got done. What fitting weather for this story. This might answer the question for some on whether or not you can drink whilst you live in a van like I do. Or if you're just a weekend camper vanner and you like to go off grid a lot, this might make you think twice about drinking. Now this all happened to me around about 18 months ago. You see, at the time I was working away a lot and I was working in Milton Keynes at this time. I'd spent three weeks down there driving a coach. It had come to the end of that three weeks away and I needed an escape into pure solitude and peace and quiet. In Milton Keynes, there's a lot of traffic racing around. There's a lot of boy racers with their big bore exhaust. And it just, it got to me all day, all night, constant noise. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to go to the Lake District. I randomly made that decision after work at about seven o'clock at night. So you can imagine it was closer to midnight by the time I actually arrived up to near Coniston. Considering it was a Friday evening, the traffic wasn't too bad. I was that keen to get up there. That didn't stop on the way up there. I just made a beeline from Milton Keynes all the way up to the Lake District. Yes, a beer was very much needed by the time I got up there. Now, I don't drink a lot anyway, so I didn't really have any on me. But when I pulled up to this quiet, secluded spot in Coniston that I know, and to my surprise, there being five other vans there, me wanting to just sort of pull up and get my head down because I was shattered, but you got to make the most of every situation. I get out my camper van and I goes around and starts doing the rounds. Hiya, how are you? Bloody blah, I'm Richard. How's it going? One of them says, do you want a beer, kid? You look like you could do with a beer. And I was like, do you know what, mate? You're my new best friend. Let me just get myself set up for the night and then I'll come down and see you. He cracks me a beer open, hands it to me and says, join us whenever you're ready. I've got all my work stuff, put that in the garage that's underneath my double bed. The my uniform was the next thing to come off. I put on something really nice, comfy, casual. Something really warm because it was bloody cold. It was probably one of the only dry days we had in April. Now they all must have knew each other really well because they had a fire going, they were all sat around the fire, they were all chatting just like best friends. So I pulled one of my chairs out of the garage at the back underneath my bed and sat it down. I went, hey you guys, so glad I just started talking and stuff like that. I got that beer, I'd had a mouthful and then I'd sat it down next to me. It looked like they'd been there for a fair while because the majority of them had had a little bit too much and they were a bit... I'd only been there about 10 or 15 minutes at this point and you've got to imagine this spot is in the middle of absolutely nowhere and there's never any vans there i've seen one or two in the past and then bang all of a sudden there's six of us when i by the time i got there i don't know what they'd been doing before i'd got there but i know when i was there it was a really civil sort of thing everyone was just having a laugh having a drink chatting there was no music on there was no loudness and we were about six mile away from the nearest village now at this point i've stayed at this spot Five or six times? To that point, I'd never seen the police or heard sirens or anything go past. There's nothing around that area. So I was quite taken aback when I saw a car pull into the actual area that we were. And again, this spot's only got enough space for the six vans that were already there. And it's very, very unusual for a car to pull in at that spot at half midnight at night. I mean, it is a popular dog walking spot in the mornings, but that's about it. So I turned and looked, and it's just a car, no sirens, no nothing like that. And he got a bit closer, and I saw the reflective stuff on it, and I thought, that's the police. What are they doing here? Now, to visualise this spot, imagine a big round car parky sort of gravel patch. It's basically an old logging road where they, this area, they used to dump and stockpile all the logs from up in the forest. And it has a road coming in, which is just the main road over here, a little driveway coming in. And then it's got the old forestry track running up into the hills. That's gated. You can't really go up there, but there is a little bit of a driveway. That's where the police car pulled up. He gets out of his car, goes into the back. And again, to this point, he still hadn't said anything, but he pulled the dog out, got the dog on a lead and just come walking over. Hey, you guys. I'm thinking he's just being friendly. He's taking his dog out for like a night exercise or something along those lines. Turns out the police were just driving past, saw that much action and commotion going on there that is unusual for that specific area. So he decided to stop and check it out. I just noticed a lot of stuff up here that's unusual, so I decided I'd pop up and just see what was going on. Oh, the rain's easing off a little bit. Ah, it's not eased off that much, actually. But anyway, I thought, oh, that's nice and friendly of you. Hi, how are you doing, Bali Bar? That didn't sit well with one of the other drivers of one of the other vans that had had a bit too much. That rain's heavier than I thought. Back in we go. As I got up to shake the policeman's hand and say, hi, yeah, Bali Bar, I'm Richard. Uh, we just sat down, chilling out. That's all I was really going to say. The other lad also got up at the same time and kind of 
passive aggressively got in the copper's face and gone, we're doing nothing wrong. There's no need for you to be here. Get back in your car. And I says to him, just go, calm down. Go sit down. He's just coming. He's just doing his job. He's doing nothing wrong. The policeman took off guard a little bit, steps back and gets on his radio. It was around about seven minutes later, another car turned up and then another van behind it. So I was like, oh no, what's going on here? Now, I was quite surprised by that as well, because if you think about it, again, we're in the middle of nowhere. Where did all these extra police come from? During the time between that incident and the extras turning up, the original officer was just going around collecting people's information, getting their IDs, writing down their names and stuff like that. And then all these turned up and then things changed drastically. I think the copper was just trying to sort of make a statement to say that he was in charge. He's going to do something. He was trying to find a problem. That's the way it seemed. He was just constantly asking questions where if we answered it incorrectly, it could be a potential problem. That's the way it seemed. Anyway, once all the backup had arrived, they had arrived with better equipment, more equipped to deal with this situation in hand. They went through and breathalyzed everybody that was there. Three of the vans were there as couples, so even the partners that were in the passenger seats, they got breathalyzed too. As soon as I saw the breathalyzer come out, I just volunteered. I was like, yeah, go and breathalyze me, knowing full well that I am completely clean. I had one mouthful of a Budweiser and that was it. This is where it gets kind of interesting, I think anyway. So that left five other vans that they were trying to get done for drunk driving. The drivers of all five vans were over the legal limit and he started talking all about you're over the prescribed limit to be in charge of a motor vehicle. Luckily, one of the vans had a partner with him. She was on the insurance and she wasn't drinking. They let her off. They let that van completely clean. No, she's on the insurance. She's legal to drive. She's safe to drive. So that is okay. The other four vans were all had a ticket written up for being over the prescribed drink drive limit whilst in charge of a motor vehicle. You'll have to go to court to try and sort it out. Part of the backup that arrived was two traffic officers inside the van. They were going around all the vans trying to find faults with the vans, trying to see if the vans were roadworthy. Luckily, everything was perfect. After they'd all gone and we were all just sat there in total disbelief over what had happened, we just carried on as normal. I didn't drink for the rest of the night, knowing full well that I was going to be up early the next morning because I had a hike planned. So I didn't want to get have an absolute skimful and then turn out and round the corner and there'd be a copper sat there waiting to breathalyze all these vans that come out in the morning. Didn't want to risk that. Got quite friendly with them. It's coming up to about half two in the morning and I went to bed along with a few of the others all started to crash out for the night. And then the next morning, it's all breakfast and stuff like that. We're all chatting and stuff. We become quite friendly, exchange Facebook details, that sort of stuff. I found out a week or so later that every single one of the ones that got a ticket all tried to appeal it all went through the court process, all were booked to go through the court process. Now, they all got different dates to go into the courtroom and stuff, and I managed to keep in touch with a few of them, and they've kept in touch with their friends and all this sort of stuff. So I managed to find out through the grapevine of what's actually happened to them. They've all gone through the court system. They've all stood there and explained absolutely everything. We were parked up in a camper van, completely off-grid. We were having a drink. We had no intent to drive, and this happened, blah de blah de blah so they have, the judge could have gone extremely serious. I mean, the judge could have took their driving licenses off them, could have gave them suspended this, could have gave them, it could have done loads. It could have been a lot more serious than what it was. It turned out they've all just been given a big fine. That was it. It leads me on to the question of, are you going to drink or do you drink while you're off grid in your camper vans? Me, I've never been a big drinker anyway, but... I'm no longer going to drink off grid or drink in my camper van unless I'm on private property, a campsite or a farm or something along those lines. For more van life content, self-built camper van content, feel free to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free.